Here we are now at the bottom of the hill, and as is often the case, we are now in some wet ground. If you're going to plant trees, for example, over there, where it's quite rough grass, it's, it's fairly well drained, but it's rough grass. Again, you will need a robust rootstock to compete with the rough grass. If you're going to plant the tree further down, where it's wetter, you would need to improve the drainage. If you don't improve the drainage, you will your trees will suffer root necrosis in the winter. They will drown over the winter. However, again, if you have a more robust rootstock, um, you have more chances of that tree surviving in the winter. Obviously, if you drain if you drain that wet area, that will help. If you mound it and plant the trees on mounds, that, that will help ameliorate the situation. Up on the top, where there was very windy and very rocky and very thin soil, I would suggest a rootstock called an MM106 for apples and equivalent for other fruits. And again, amongst all these, all this rank grass, I would use an MM106 because it's robust. In Kent, the Garden of England, that tree would be about, say, 15 foot high and spread. Here, it will be considerably smaller, dwarfed by the conditions, but still strong and healthy nonetheless. If I'm planting in the swamp on a mound, I would, I would suggest a rootstock called MM111 because it has a, has a a flat weight of a rootstock, a bit like a spruce. The roots don't go down so they don't drown. These floral tributes show you will of indicator species that will that tell you if ground is too wet. This is creeping buttercup. See that? Too wet. This is lady's smock. Too wet. This is marsh marigold king cup, much too wet. And this, as you can see, is reeds, much too wet. With those last two, you, you will be pushing your luck. Better off, perhaps, dig a nice lake with a JCB and have some ducks.